Okay, so this chapter is going to be about how populations evolve. So how the actual process works. And one thing I've been kind of harping on is that we always think that it's one individual that just decides, hey, I'm sick of being crouched over. I'm going to stand up. Oh, now everybody's going to do that. Not exactly how it works, right? It's populations that evolve over time. So what we're going to talk about in this chapter is going to be population genetics, and that's going to be looking at the genes within populations, obviously. And we're going to break it into little pieces called microevolution. So that's looking at little evolutionary events that when they accumulate are going to lead to what's called macroevolution, which is a big change over time. So when we, you've heard of the term the gene pool probably, and that's going to really literally be translated into the frequency of the alleles in a population. Oh my God, I just brought up by a 111 terms. Hope you're doing okay. So remember an allele is an alternative form of a gene. So remember when we talked about eye color, there was big B and little b, those are the alleles, the possible alleles. So um, if we're going to define what a species is, and the reason we're going to define a species is because that's the unit of evolution, right? When something eventually evolves, it's going to evolve into a new species. A species is going to be a group of individuals that can interbreed and produce viable, which is living, fertile offspring. So that's going to be the important parts about this. And as you'll learn, nature doesn't always follow these rules. Um, that's an important concept to understand is that this is nature we're talking about. It's not perfect. So there are going to be instances where there's exceptions to everything. And that's just how, how it goes. Okay. So a gene pool is going to be the frequency of the alleles in the population, and that can change due to a couple of things I've listed here, a couple of things that you probably haven't heard of before, and that's why we're here. Um, now there's going to be some alleles that we're not even going to bother looking at in a population, and that's because they are what we call fixed in a population, which means that they're not going anywhere. Um, for example, having a backbone in our population. It's not like we're like, oh, wow, I wonder if our baby's going to be born without a backbone or without skin, because um, that allele is pretty much fixed in our population. It's not going anywhere. Um, so you're going to look at things that maybe could change over time. Um, so, one thing that's really important is, um, sorry, my husband is texting me, <laughs> um, is we need to know a baseline data, right? So we need to know what a population looks like before we can figure out if it's actually changing, which makes sense, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to work on some frequencies right here. So remember that every gene has two alleles in general, right? And so you can have homozygous dominant, heterozygous, or homozygous recessive. Hopefully that sounds familiar. Um, if not, we can go over that. Um, so if we were going to say that we have 500 individuals in our population and each of them has two alleles, then that tells us that there are 1,000 total alleles in the population. Hopefully that makes sense. So the frequency is just how many times out of a thousand that allele shows up. So let's say that um, we're looking at plants and of our 500 individuals, which is a thousand alleles, 320 of them are big R, big R, which is homozygous dominant. So if we're trying to figure out how many big R alleles are in the, just this group right here, well, we have 320 of this big R, and we have 320 of this big R. So if we add this 100, 320 to this 320, we get 640, right? So in this population alone, there are 640 big R alleles. Now, if we look at the next one, 160 of the plants are heterozygous, so they have one of each, right? So that means we'll have 160 of this big R allele and 160 of the little r allele. So there's our 160 big R, 160 little r. Then if we look down here, 20 of the plants are little r, little r, right? So we have 20 of this little r and 20 of this little r, which gives us 40 total. And then if we are going to add them all together to figure out how many total big R alleles there are and how many total little R alleles there are, all we have to do is add them, right? So we have 640 of the big R here and then 160 of the big R here. So that together is going to give us 800. And then here we have 160 little R and 40 little R, which gives us a total of 200. And I wrote that out here. 640 plus 160 is 800. 160 plus 40 is 200. So we get a frequency for the big R allele or the dominant allele of 80% and a frequency of 20% for the little r allele. Now you always can check and make sure that those equal 100 because those are the only two alleles in our population we're looking at. Now, 
if we came back and it had been like six generations since we'd done this and we noticed that this number changed to 81% and this one went to 19%, that would tell us that the population has evolved. So anytime you see allele frequencies change, evolution is happening. And so what we'll talk about in the next video are the conditions that need to be present in order for population to be evolving.